Hey friends, today's video is continuing on my most requested video, which is breaking down what loadouts deserve to be in my Season 23 loadout slots. I am mostly a PvP player, I'm going to say the same thing as yesterday, so I try to keep most of these two PvP builds, although I do have one PvE build and one Gambit build. I do main Gambit on the Warlock, but I haven't played it frequently enough to warrant this loadout. That Gambit loadout also doubles as a PvE loadout. To summarize my PvE loadouts, I typically do run a toolbox setup where I just switch all the exotic boots as necessary, but a lot of my raid teammates are with the program, so I can pretty much just run my GM setup, which is what I'm running right here with Polaris Lance. And I'm not really going to break that down. Y'all can just look up a guide video for that. What you're here for is for PvP. And this is my most effective loadout in solo queue because typically I get lobby balance with teammates that are brand new to the game against sometimes very experienced opponents. And although I do like sniping, I only get two bullets. I could inventory and switch weapons, but I'm not going to do that. So instead, I just go with double primary. I have an incendiary nade, but it doesn't matter because I have the exotic Eye of Another World, which gives me better cooldowns. Then I float, look for my initial pick. Maybe get it, maybe I don't. In the background, my cooldowns will be going. I try to play close and keep the reses off with Tommy's Matchbook. Tommy's Matchbook has a giant magazine, so I'm able to fight a lot of opponents. Able to heal if I need it after deleting somebody. Rinse, delete another. This is the uh, fragment setup I run, though, so I can get instant team waves. Ember of Char, Ember of Eruption... Ember of Searing, Ember of Ashes. Pretty much how this goes down is I wait till I see red on the radar, make some noise, try to group them together, try to make them overextend, bounce the nade, throw the melee, and that is an entire team ripped. Now, yes, there is slide canceling associated with, uh, well, first I have to throw my super. Like this. Your super cooldown. You hit your super button while sliding. It's really good. But Celestial Fire, sorry, Incinerator Snap has less range than Celestial Fire. So when you're going for the bomb combo, you want to uh, use Celestial Fire. You can catch people off guard. I think Frostbolt has hit the triple on me before. So, just fun facts. Always run Icarus Dash. Always run Heat Rises. I rarely find an opportunity for Touch of Flame outside of sixes. Doesn't deserve a slot in the uh, loadouts. Phoenix Dive is really good. I know Hanra runs a like hyper recovery setup that I want to experiment with. But for now, this is what gets me results. It's the flexibility of being able to blow up wells. I can't really handle bubbles uh, too good. But I can also just break it with Tommy's matchbook and use my own super as like a counter super. So let's say bubble comes up. Pop mine. And then I just hold this down until the bubble breaks. It's not flashy, but it can get the job done in a pinch. The ass, uh, sorry, the mo mod customization I'm using. Strand unflinching, harmonic unflinching, and then phantom endurance to take my resilience from 70 to 100 whenever I step over an orb. Get the orb the reaper, activate my class ability, get a kill, pick it up, walk over the orb during the Tommy's matchbook fight. That way I get a chunk of health to help me better duel the next player. By the way, Tommy's matchbook, it gets bullied by SMGs. So if you are going to fight an immortal, you pretty much already have to be almost spun up to be able to beat him. And this gun is really buggy in the sense that the bullets don't seem to register and then all of them register at once. So you got to trust your hip fire aim and just stay on target. And you'll eventually get the sixth sense of when you know you're allowed to walk away from the fight or instantly Phoenix Dive because you know they're just going to be deleted as soon as the network catches up. So I hope Bungie fixes that. But for now, this is the only setup that can make up for the lack of teammates contribution where it's just every round I'm going into it, it's the same game plan. Float a different angle. Look for my one straggler pick. Take him down. Use that as an opportunity to get in, maybe win another duel, or keep them off the body with Tommy's matchbook by breaking barricades, since I can spin up to break barricades. Other times, it's not using heat rises, keeping myself planted 
going for the triple, like I said. Or popping Heat Rises and staying planted anyway as just like a long-term um, mental psych out. Like, you know, that type of thing. I think I'm good to move on to the next. I typically always run Glissando Tommies with this, even in sixes. This is one of the best sixes loadouts because you can float off angles and basically spawn trap people. I will occasionally switch to Jade Rabbit off of Glissando and run an SMG with this but I can only fit so many weapons in here. Another setup worth mentioning is Sweet Business. Sweet Business is incredible, but I typically like that better on transversive steps. It's the exact same reasoning as everything I just said, except the difference is you can put realistic suppressing fire on sniper rifles and they probably won't snipe you. I say probably, but we do have cheaters in this game, so maybe they're gonna hit you anyway. So now my ignition combo is a little different. I use Swarm Grenade because it combos with the uh, Snap Cancel. And then I can also Phoenix Dive whenever I have Heat Rises activated. And it will just blow up the entire team. These are the fragments I run on this combo. Ashes, Searing, Mercy, Torches. This one is like tried and true. I thought for the longest time I would never switch fragments because all of these are obviously good. Torches comes up so much because... You play Titans, right? Titan sits behind Barricade. Let's just go with Quicksilver. Titan sits behind Barricade. They're getting a res. Pop your Celestial Fire... or Sorry, your Incinerator Snap. Now you get Radiant. And you can break their Barricade and kill the Titan behind them before they can maybe get the revive off. If you use Drang... Like, I think Pure Chill did this to me once. Was I got hit by the one single tick of the Melee Fire... And then just Drang also broke my barricade and TTK'd me from behind it. So, it's worth keeping in mind that you can play around torches to make plays. Back to sweet business, though. This is my Trials of Osiris setup again, where I would be switching from, like, Wither Horde to Wish Ender to sweet business to Quicksilver Kinetic version to DMT and just playing Dimentory, uh, playing no scrub mentality, doing everything I need to win. This is very, very, very good. I can, of course, go flawless just using Sweet Business. But if you want to play to win, you do everything that is allowed in the game. Anyways, what makes this loadout special is it can pivot to all subclasses. Pivot meaning I can just switch a couple mods and it's ready to play. A class that I have been thoroughly enjoying is Strand. Broodweeper. I typically run the same setup, which is Threat of Ascent, Evolution, and Warding. Picking up Orb gives me Woven Mail, which reduces damage to body shots. And that helps you combat fusion rifles and shotguns, which are very frequent. But if I do use an auto rifle, I switch to Threat of Isolation, because this can help make a tangle with just the time to kill of an auto rifle. Tangles are useful because you can grapple to them and they're like throwable grenades. So they're amazing. Anyway, I'm going to switch one of my intellect mods to resilience. Then my other intellect mod to recovery. And look, I now have a playable strand warlock set up. And it's the exact same thing. You can do a slide cancel without um, having to be tied to your melee ability. You can use all three of them and you can still snap cancel. It's very, very useful. Uh, one thing I like to do on this Broodweaver setup is the half grapple. Use half of my charge in order to get the bonus of Threat of Ascent. Which is extra handling and airborne effectiveness. Something that I can't get enough of. Now I will tell you, if you do a lot of slide canceling while aiming down sights, it's very jarring. Especially with the hand cannon, so I like having hip fire weapons... Kind of playing Lion Rampants at home. Which is funny because Lion Rampants is playing Dawnblade at home. So there's some crossover there. Uh, past that, the other part of this is Weave Walk. And although I only have two strength, it's still good. Still really. You don't have to commit to the entire strength charge. You can just like get a melee, realize you're going to die, pop it, get out immediately while your teammate kills him. 
sometimes it works. This isn't my main strand build, though. My main strand build is this, Necrotic Grip. And just because you use Necrotic Grip does not mean that you're tied to Thorn. Uh, let me pull up my Warlock notes here. Got him. Okay. Necrotic Grip. 7 ticks of 5 damage, 35. The dart does 68, 103 total. That's pretty good for a melee. When you look at what the melee is accomplishing. Let's say that I know someone is going to peek this angle. Or about to peek me. Like I get weak from the side. I push off this guy. I know they're going to peek. Throw the dart. That dart just did 103 damage. I think that is ridiculously strong. And yes, I am combining it with Weave Walk. But I'm also building into high strength. So this is something that I want to get more playtime, kind of like my OEM Titan yesterday. I want to playtest this and just see what's missing. I think Necrotic Grip is like the best thing for this because the Grapple Melee also activates it. The Neutral Melee also activates it. Remember, every Titan has a plus 40 overshield these days. So if you melee, even like Shotgun Melee them, you might not survive. So the Necrotic Grip can somehow turn off their healing which means you're winning team fights more often. So that's my reasoning for, for picking the necrotic darts. I think DMT 80. You want to always like preemptively throw this, go into cover and then peek out. So preemptive throw in cover, shoot. And by the time they peek, both of the shots are going to register at the same time. Even better with a bow, I suppose, but the timing wouldn't be perfect. If I do use a bow, you're going to see this later. It is ridiculously strong. Speaking of, let's just cover that then. Let's cover the bow. If I am going to bow, I can change this loadout to snap and firebolt nade. And then I can change this to strafe glide. And what you're about to see is uh, pretty terrifying. This is the fastest precision bow in the game. This is putting up Oathkeeper numbers. This is a 6 out of 10 roll. I farmed it with the bow players, the bow discord, the homies, and I got this in front of their eyes. They led me to a treasure that they could not possess, which I also played a lot of Iron Banner with them, and they all got the god roll bows of that, and I'm still chasing. I want the Iron Banner bow more. If I could trade, I would. If I could have, what's it called, the Incendiary perk? Incandescent. If I could have Incandescent there, I would also prefer that. But I'll make this work. This is arguably the best bow in the game. I've gushed about it enough. And so what makes this amazing, you pop Heat Rises on Strafe Glide, and you zoom. So if I ever play on the OCE servers, I have the better nuclear option. And that is with, you know, the slide cancel too. Anyway, I will basically beat out every long-range weapon as long as I'm hitting headshots. It is crazy. And if you want to be even crazier, get yourself uh, in Steezel-type montage. Use Shoot to Loot. Because if you get your kill, after, let's say, a Pop Reaper, get your kill. And if you move your crosshair up to about their health bar, that's where the orb's going to spawn from. Orb's going to pop up, and then it's going to fall down. So as long as you just leave your crosshair at, like, head level, wait for the orb to cross the path of your crosshair and just release. And you will get your leg mod health back from shooting the orb. Sometimes I'll shoot ammo off the floor to prevent snipers from taking it. There was a moment where I was playing Halo duos with Drew in Trials, and I happened to shoot an orb off the floor that might have mattered in the gunfight, so... It does come up. It's a really cool perk, which is why I call this a 6 out of 10. This is a Neuron Activator setup for me. This is supposed to be built for Thorn. But I've kind of fallen out of fashion with Thorn since they buffed it so much. The Catalyst was a little bit overkill. And that would you would think I would want to use it more, right? But I actually want to use it less. I don't know why. I, I don't have the catalyst leveled, so I'll have to do that. 
the killing wind on it's a little jarring with blink i will say like that's my negative of it even though i can say overall it's a net gain uh, so anyway i can go Ganora's axe or matador thorn and then three kinetic surges that way when i pick up the thorn perk it will two tap no matter what resilience level they are however i don't have to bet the farm on that i can go hawk moon instead play my my hawk moon game Just fight for headshots uh, what makes blink so powerful is if i am held down by a goaded sniper they've never missed in their life I'm allowed to blink from cover to cover if I got the skill to do it. Uh, forgive me, because I have played a lot of Arc Strider, and this is also a low ceiling. That was too much that time, but you see, you see what I'm trying to cook here, right? It's You can go from that cover, then to that cover, like back to back. Uh, hit the ceiling again. Try it one more time. That's a little bit better. Anyway. It's really, really hard to track for a sniper... And as Blink, even if you're playing against a cheater, there is a chance that you Blink perfectly to get around the map behind them so you can set up a crossfire. Even if they have aimbot, you can still team shot them to death as long as it's one cheater against three good players. Uh, sorry that this wasn't like the best demo for Blink, but just trust me, if you put the time in, you will be unsnipable. As long as you're playing in a team setting. Also, the Child of the Old Gods going... Um, Crazy, Voizel, that also helps keep snipers off you and keeps you plus in the fight. You always have more health as a team unit than their team. Plays into Devour. I, I go Leeching just for stats, but it's also very valuable for a shotgunner. The classic Blink shotgun setup. Uh, the difference from Destiny 2 to Destiny 1 is in Destiny 1, you would Blink, then shotgun. In Destiny 2, it's a little bit different. I think you shotgun and then you Blink. And then shotgun again. Or melee. Which is why I say Echo of Leeching makes a lot of sense. Then of course Dilation just for the Crouch Radar. And I switch the Rift depending on what I want the Void Soul to do. Either giving me abilities or health back. Also depends on the team composition I'm playing with. And whether or not I'm playing sixes. Suppressor is not an optimal choice here. Because you typically want a kill nade to proc devour in clutch situations but i use suppressor so much on my other classes i feel obligated to use it here i almost put a secant filament exotic boot into this uh 10 loadouts because it's a very useful in sixes especially if you're farming a gun kill counter but i decided against it because ultimately i always if i'm playing void walker i'm using blink and if I'm using Blink, I'm using Astrocyte because it opens up more unique uh, paths that I can prevent getting sniped from. Like, that was that was a really good Blink. That was also good. That was also good. Yeah, okay. So I, I got it there. It's just this little short ceiling was ruining it. Moving on. If you want to go Galaxy Brain, you can start learning turret lineups and that's what this class is for let me double check that i showed you all the mods for uh astrocyte here we go one more glance uh the nova bomb choice i like vortex if you play sixes nova warp is really good okay now turret thrower mods Frost Pulse, because you want to cancel Bubbles and Missile Titans. Bleak Watcher, and since you're using Bleak Watcher anyway, you might as well be on Glacier. So you can platform, you can use it as a barricade, etc. And it does come up, because I'm at 10 Discipline with an exotic that cools down uh, all my abilities. So that 4 Strength goes crazy. It is way higher than you think with I Have Another World. And the Discipline has diminishing returns, but it's still faster than 10 Discipline. Uh, one thing I will mention is the marking of highlight uh, priority targets also is very useful for deciding who is going to super you because if you got that kind of like heat in the game, people will focus you down and use the it, they'll throw the whole kitchen sink at you. So if you meet that heat check, 
you will get supered, which means this highlight yellow matters so much because you have to react to that sound cue. Slide out, Missile Titan, you know, doing this little teabag strafe with the SMG. Realize they suck and are getting gunned anyway. They're just going to pop Missile. You want to react instantly. Make them look dumb. Anyway, if you want to big brain, you're going to have to do this on every single map. I don't have one off the top of my head here. But you throw your turret. You decide on whether or not you're using Fastball or not. I use Fastball because I also use it as a Glacier Nade. Uh, so that I can get the glacier down faster. The farness doesn't matter. I just want it down as fast as possible. Let's see, where did turret go? It's somewhere on one of these ceilings. You don't actually have to throw it directly in the air. You can just like bank it off objects and let it run overwatch like that. And you could leave it on a corner ahead of time. It would keep up the zone. This is one of those where it's like your game knowledge can win by itself. And against the best players in the world, they're going to remember your turret lineup and play around it. So you need to have, like, alternative turret setups. You need to learn all the map knowledge, where to go out of bounds. You need to learn the chain freeze timings. Uh, you jump wide, saw a player, freeze them, move up with the rift. As soon as they become unfrozen, they're refrozen by the rift. Pick up your swashbuckler weapon, get your punch. If you know you can't get there in time, throw your glacier down to break line of sight. Start working a different angle. Go back to your rift, punch that to splash damage a player. There's a, there's just so much you can do. The super, you can also split the projectiles with mouse and keyboard or controller if you got it. I think my eight sensitivity is enough to do this, which is still good. And if you want to get a fast kill, throw the throw one out and then immediately right trigger to uh, ignite it. Uh, what I will do in some sixes modes is I will not initiate the kill and let my teammates handle it. I'll just freeze them, leave them for my teammates, and start hunting. Just to save even more time. In Eruption, this is the winning strategy. If it's a bubble... Uh, first of all, you can also third-person peek with this. You see how the staff peeks, but I'm not exposing myself? This is one of the best anti-cheat loadouts for that reason. And uh, this would be the, the third best anti-cheat. This is the second best anti-cheat. Osmiomancy, you're going to see how this shifts. You don't have turrets on this, but like, you can slow a cheater, but you can't slow their aimbot, so you just have to freeze their aimbot. And you can do the same like over the map lobs, but honestly, just play patient, wait for them to have to peek for the objective, throw one cold snap, get your freeze, chain your freeze, chain your freeze, punch them. It is worth throwing the kitchen sink if it gets a cheater out of the game. If you're fighting bubbles, like I was just getting into, you can jump way up high, float for a second to bait their shotguns, and then stick just the tip of the staff in, just the tip, into the bubble and freeze both of them. Uh, past that, fragments or chains for resistance, impetus for the reload, which does come up. Bonds is an important one. We'll get to that in a second. And torment from war grenades. So here we go with conditional finality. It counts as a freeze for Whisper of Bonds. So I can slide into a group of players, hit the top of the magazine freeze shot. What that looks like. Also, this gun is amazing for Shadebinder. This Abyss Defiant, Swashbuckler on Frozen Kills. So now I have the Stasis shot. If I slide into him, hit him, it'll just drop an orb on the floor. And because of Ice Flare uh, Bolts, it'll also drop an Ice Flare Bolt. So even if I have no grenade charge and I get my freeze shot, it can still freeze the entire team, which is crazy. I don't even need a proc reaper to get the orb, which gives me my health and my grenade energy back. I run solar surge, so after I freeze rift, melee kill, I can four tap that fast, 0.5 time to kill, six resilience. Say I get my punch, it's a titan. It's going to be a 5 tap. 0.67. So that's a mortal time to kill. If I get my orb, I get Fawn of Endurance. Brings me up to 10 resilience. Which is interesting because you could think I could run a Whisper Hedrons, get a juiced gun. But if I'm already getting 10 resilience from just getting my freeze kill anyway, the aim assist is nice, but it's fine for having more grenades. 
which I want because this is one of my potential anti-cheat loadouts. I should just move on to that. This is the number one best anti-cheat loadout in the game. The double grenade launcher. I forgot to go into Shadebinder fragments here, so I want to make sure I hit these correctly. I have Durance because the turret's low. Torment for nade energy and bonds again. I probably will run conditional on this too, but sometimes I snipe because I like glacier platforming. Okay, let's go over this one. Um, classic epic defender grenade launcher. He signed it. Demo and slide shot to have more aggressive fire of these. Pick up ammo and just keep going. You want to start with fighting lion because if you pick up the kill with the other grenade launcher, it will auto reload fighting lion. Anytime you dodge with this Reign of Fire exotic boots, it just reloads your guns. So you get to do this to people. Shoot them, splash, slide, kill, reloads Lion on the kill. So just pretend this didn't reload. Shoot again, dodge, shoot again. And that's that like deadly volley that you can send down and why it is so effective against cheaters. Sniper about to peek. Dodge towards him, finish that. If there's three of you running this that know what you're doing, you might not even realize that you're playing against cheaters. It is that powerful of a build. But it does have a lot of, uh, let's say, user error involved, which is why I don't consider this one of the most obnoxious builds in the game, because most people just can't pilot it like that. I would like to think I got it like that, but I use this build so infrequently, I probably don't anymore. And I use it infrequently because... The game kind of becomes boring when you have this much of an advantage over other players to me. And no disrespect to other players, right? You can still be talented and use something that gets a lot of mileage. Same thing with this bow. But me personally, this is one of those builds that if I use it too much, I probably wouldn't be as good as a content creator. Maybe a better player, but worse content creator. Because I do want to continue learning about variety. Like I learned about the final warning sidearm the other day. Which I thought was kind of an OP weapon at first. Because it's like an auto tracking pistol. But after using it I will say it's one of the most challenging and also rewarding guns. It's a very very unique playstyle that comes associated with this. I don't want to go too off topic with the like no honor and slash morality gentleman's agreement discussions. But that's essentially why I don't run this build. Is because the few times that I do, I get so much mileage that I just missed out on like four videos that I could have been focusing on something else. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, fragments. Font of Wisdom. If I pick up an orb, it goes to 10 intellect, which is diminishing returns to be fair. But it does add up and it comes up more than dynamo. I don't need targeting. And if I do, I'll just switch the mod. So I go Void Siphon for the Fighting Lion, Kinetic Siphon for the Grenade Launcher. By the way, if Militia's Birthright was here with Frenzy, I would probably take Frenzy over this Ignition Code, but I also can't argue with Epic Defender. If Ep Epic Defender likes this better, I'm just using this. Just makes way more sense. Void Loader for the Fighting Lion, Heavy Handed to get an Orb back in a pinch. Unflinching for both of my Grenade Launchers, you only need one. Better already and recuperation because I really don't know what to put there. Void weapon surge for fighting lions since that's the infinite ammo. Powerful attraction so that if I do my standard ashes searing torches mercy dive. It blows them up. I mentioned scatter grenade earlier but the reason I run scatter over firebolt is because if a well of radiance drops you can do this and it will ignite them with the scatters. It also works very nice against invis players. So let's say you're playing like this dark tunnel and you want to make sure that you're not getting flanked by an invis player. Put that right there and then just play normally. If those swarms go off, you know that they're in close. So it's a nice little zoning tool. I really, really like this grenade and think it's heavily underrated. This is my, my sixes healing build. Sometimes it comes out in threes because it does TTK shift. Uh, let's say I'm playing with two Crimson users. This is probably a no-brainer that uh, comes out. Amber of Benevolence gives me my riff faster. Other than that, I think I'd keep it pretty similar. And honestly, I might consider ditching this. But the way it would work is we spawn up. I go to a very popular choke point, but don't peek yet. I just sit right here, and I wait. 
While I'm waiting, my teammates are getting buffs from me standing in the rift, and I'm getting a noble round. By the way, I want to be able to pivot this to uh, strand in the future, so I probably have to find another armor setup that makes it work, but just know that you can do something really cool with noble round plus uh, grapple. And so that seems like a nice little neuron activator for me. So I'm totally down to try that in the future. Let's queue up another. I might not need to queue up another. I think that was everything. These are the fragments. Sorry, mod customization. Fragments aspects. I always try to reshow these just in case I missed it. It's worth mentioning that Dawnblade Daybreak Super might be better on the fighting line setup. Just for like guaranteeing that you can win a match. I don't know. Well, still pretty powerful though. Uh, these are the weapons I throw on. I have my classic Scout Float Glissando. I use Jade Rabbit otherwise. I do have a perfect... Is it No Feelings? Let's just search Box Breathing. No Feelings? Yeah. In Iron Banner, this comes out sometimes because it lets me use Sweet Business with it. Then I have Hung Jury. This is arguably a better role than my Glissando, but I like Glissando for the highlight scope and Zero Synergy. But this one's still really good, has slightly more zoom. This would probably be a better setup on controller for me. Did I mention that I Have Another World gives plus 15 aerial effectiveness? So I don't even have to have Heat Rises necessarily proc'd to get a lot of mileage out of it other weapons i'm now a high impact sniper user i don't mess with galu anymore so since i'm on i have another world anyway this has 100 range with i have another world heat rises 100 aerial effectiveness this thing is not missing in the sky it's just not with icarus grip of course so i can even run like my standard fighting lion combo if i really wanted to Reign of Fire is pretty much needed for Fighting Lion, though, so I'd have to suffer with 99 AE instead. Uh, DMT, probably the best weapon in the game. Quicksilver is the best auto rifle. I'm still working on my mouse and keyboard aim, so I'm typically playing auto rifles these days. So this is more just, like, useful weapons. But ultimately, when I'm playing right now, I'm just going to use an auto rifle because it's more satisfying. Swashbuckler Truth Teller, Hipfire Ganora, Standard Matador, Perfect Abyss Defiant, Hipfire Wizened, show that again, Occluded Finality without the Extended Mag, I'm going to eventually go for that again, BXR Battler with Blunt Execution Rounds, Standard Power Weapons, talked about them more in detail on my Titan video. Okay, so let's talk about T-Steps. That's the final point on this video. T-Steps and Hawkmoon don't mix, and Hawkmoon wins games. So, do I have, do I run T-Steps? Hawkmoon is that influential a weapon to me. I don't know. I'm torn with T-Steps on Warlock because they're so obviously good, and when I watch footage back, there's so many subtle plays I make with T-Steps in... The snap can This is why dunes are different on Titan, by the way. I can always snap cancel on Warlock and always Icarus dash. So having the extendo slide to have more of a window to snap cancel. I could see red scopes, snap cancel, and immediately Icarus dash back. And that might be like my life spared there, which means I'm getting more cooldowns from just being alive. I have more influence on the match. I'm getting to places faster. I'm auto loading the uh, sweet business from earlier. And then on Strand, it's the same thing with the slide cancel. I would even argue that the best version of me playing Stasis is on this setup. Because I can just switch to Cold Snaps. Basically play my Osmio setup. On my Warlock. On my, on my uh, Solar Warlock, t -Sap. So, this is borderline. Like, T-Steps are so influential that I almost just had... T-step 1, T-step 2, T-step 3, T-step 4, T-step 5, T-step 6, and like 
and so forth until it got to the anti-cheat setup. That's how influential they are uh, to my gameplay. Uh, but I'm just, I'm not sure. I want to play more variety. So maybe just for sake of variety, I play this build less even though it's better for me. So I can show off more other cool stuff like Necrotic Grip, Astrocyte. I have another world turrets, Osmium Ansi chaining against cheaters, and so forth. Playing Lumina. At a certain point, I do want to become more consistent with T-Steps, but doing that requires me to just play that and only that. That's bad for content. Hope that makes sense. So for that reason, I'm going to get used to not running T-Steps so I can run everything else. I hope you learned something new in this video, found it interesting. I will eventually have another real PvE setup on this character again. But for now, I'm focusing on getting the Titan squared away since the Titan is the speedrunning gold standard for a lot of GM content. And so it just cuts down on my grind time by focusing on my Titan first. See ya.